morning everyone welcome to the stream i'm martin wenzel and today we are in microsoft flight simulator as is usually the case and we're doing our world tour flight 171 flying into every country and territory in the world uh, following real life routes and airlines as much as possible today we are in up here we're at we're at well we're in sao paulo uh brazil or technically garulhos brazil at sao paulo garulhos governor andre franco montoro international airport and we're gonna be flying down to carrasco general cesario el Berisso international airport in ciudad de la costa montevideo montevideo uh canelones uruguay so Basically, the capital of Uruguay, uh, Monte de Video. Uh, I'm saying that all wrong. <laughs> uh, we're going to be flying on Gold Transportes Aereos, uh, flight 7630 on the on the Boeing 737-800 from PMDG, if I can talk. Um, and yeah, that's what we got. Uh, those going to be first time flying the 737-800 from PMDG. This came out in the last week or two. Uh, we're going to be using FSC, FS, FS HUD ATC. Um, I'm going to try to use the GSX. I don't know if it's on. Let's see if it's going to work right away. Yep, I didn't start. It hasn't started yet, so we'll we gotta restart see if that works. And we'll try to mess around with it. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. We're going to just try it. If it doesn't work, we're going to move on so we can get this flight in and do it. Thanks. Hey, Sasha. Hey, Mika. Welcome in. Glad to see you here. Uh, frame rate is really low. I'm not sure why. Because I didn't really add anything. The only thing new today versus yesterday is the... The... Yeah, really nothing, actually. I mean, we're in the 737-800. But otherwise, uh, same stuff as usual. Alright, so let's see if that GSX is going to work now. Get the jetways. Get that work. Get our handling operator to be a DOL. Seven eight hundred day. Looking really good. I like this livery. Got that little bit of wear on it. The DOL. Really good. So it looks like we got the ground handling in place. Uh, so let's see how much we can mess with this and if GSX is going to cooperate today. So we're going to request a boarding. I have to reload the Sim Brief. Sim Brief aircraft 738 doesn't match. So well, this is the 780, or this is the 738. So I don't know why it's saying that. Okay, whatever. So let's request boarding. Let's see if this works. While it's doing that, we're going to get inside and get this plane going. So let's check this stuff. I'll open my flight plan over there. Okay. And let's put this uh, replay thing away. I forgot to close that out. We don't need that replay. It's not a replay. We're live right now. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, so let's... 
actually, yeah, I don't know why the frame rate is eating it, but let's get the battery on. Standby power up there. I haven't set custom cameras for everything yet. Alright, let's go out here. I want to see the pilot board. Let's see, see it. Ooh, the door open on there? Oh no, the door opened on the plane. Okay. And you can see the pilot. There he is. Pretty cool. They'll get right on in the plane. Now you can obviously you can see us still in the plane. But there it is. Awesome. Working so far. Let's see if the baggage is going to go. I'm surprised they don't do the catering. Maybe we have to request the catering. It's not part of the boarding service. So that's kind of cool. There comes our uh, flight attendants. We're going to get in here and get the plane going. Otherwise, probably should have done that before requesting, but I just wanted to see if it would work. Uh, Alright, so... I feel like there should be more light switches, but... Uh. Alright, so we are in the battery. We do have ground power available because it's already connected. We'll switch to that pretty soon. Alright, hydraulic pumps, interior lights. Uh, we already have the ground power. So we're going to go turn that on. And ground power selector. Let me know if this sounds enough for you guys in the plane. Uh, I can turn up Microsoft Flight Simulator, work on that. It's too low. Awesome, you can hear them talking. There are, you can see them coming into the plane. They're really high. curious to see uh, what we can do with the fuel. I, I haven't had the fuel truck come, so we might just throw that all on. Um, so let's get, let's keep going here. We got the ground power selected. Emergency lights armed and covered. Down there. Okay, and we want to have strobe steady, anti-collisions off, logo, wheel well, wing can be on. Well, we don't need the wing. We're not doing inspection. Uh... Master costume disengage. Seatbelt signs we'll keep off because we haven't fueled yet. Uh, we're just kind of doing things a little bit out of order. Uh, now we're going to go into the FMS. Payload. Set empty. Wow, it looks like we already have a bunch of fuel. Ah, oh, we're in pounds. Okay, I have to go up here. PMDG setup, I believe it's options, simulation. On that one. Because oh. we're in the new plane here, we have to set up the Where is it? Am I missing an option here? Oh, here it is. Equipment displays, I think is what we're going to want. We want it in kilos. Just because it makes it easier. I have everything set up for kilos on sim brief and all that. Keep all this same for now. 
menu, back to FS Actions, Payload, we're gonna go empty. Uh, fuel. We'll go one third, and that might even be enough to flight, so we might not have to. Oh, no, we do have to add some. But. Okay, perfect. So we got the fuel. Ground services, we're gonna put on the passengers we have today. They're already coming on, but we're gonna get them loading through uh, the plane itself. 125 passengers. Why only 125? That's pretty low for this plane. Start boarding. Uh, we'll just do the cargo manually since they're already loading. Fuel, um, I'm not sure how we'll do that yet. Let's see if the fuel truck comes, and if it doesn't, then we will go from there. 9400 is going to be our target for fuel. We'll get back on that a little bit later. I want to turn up my panels. Um, I believe it's a yearly subscription for uh, Navigraphs. Which is always going to be the best deal. Uh, but they, I don't know if they have a... I don't know if they have a monthly option. So I know I have... I know I am using... Uh, a yearly option. Alright, I think all the passengers are on board. Oh, again, I, I'm not sure why my frame rate sucks, but it is what it is. Alright, so passengers are on board that place. I'm gonna get Pack X going so we can possibly. The reason I run Pack X is not so much, I mean, we have so many cool simulation things now in the planes themselves, but Pack X will give you some of those, uh, cool passenger emergencies and stuff how much is yearly in pounds i have no idea um let me let me get the plane set up and i'll get back to you on that i'm sure you can check uh, navigraph.com i think would tell you uh, but I'll, I'll take a look i think it's like a uh, i want to say a hundred dollars all right i'm not sure i think it's worth it though I never had it before, and then now that I have it, I couldn't do it any other way, I think. We'll do that. Alright, oh, let's get that, let's get up top because we haven't done this yet. We should start getting our uh, nav lined up. I don't know why I can't get the IRS to display like up there. Usually you'll light up all those lights when you do the test. I don't do it for me anymore. I don't know why. Alright, a line. Oh, you got the month. Yeah, I don't know what it is monthly. Um, and I don't know what it is exactly for the year. I'll, I'll take a look. But if you get it for the year, um, and you can always switch that, I believe, you, like anything, you know, once you decide, oh, you know what, I want to, I'm going to use this all the time, you can just have to swap out, update that on their website, I, I believe. All right, let's get in to the, into the flight computer here, or getting close, uh, recirculating fan, so this is different, so I was saying, like, for the 738, there's not much different on the overhead panel. Um, even though this overhead panel feels so different from what in from my X-Plane days, but I guess it is the same. Hard to tell. It looked a little bit different in X-Plane, I think. Um, but there's, I think, two recir... No, I think we had both the recirculating fans. But this is new uh, in the 738 is this part. Or they have, like, I think these three knobs. That's basically the only thing that's different that I've been able to find so far um, that I noticed when I was in the 737. Alright, recirculating fans are set to auto. Pack left and right set to auto. Autopilots check off. Speed brake check down. We should do that because yes, yeah, that looks good. Um, cockpit voice recorder. We don't have to do that test. Engine fire test. Right here, I believe, right? Is 
is, I believe, the APU fire test right here, I think. I'm not exactly sure the test, but these are different tests. <laughs> so we'll do them right there. Uh, we can test the cargo bay stuff. All right. Uh, go back up. Or nope, nope. Go to the FMC at this point. And put in our reference airport. Where are we? We are Sierra Bravo Golf Romeo. We're at gate 405. How does that line up with a real life gate? I can tell you. Uh, we are gate 4. On behalf of the cabin crew, I'd like to welcome you aboard our flight. As you find your seat, be sure to put that in place. Carry on items in the overhead bins and smaller Copy items. Copy that over. We'll go. If you have trouble finding a location for any of the route. Items, please use the flight attendant call button over your seat and somebody. There, and we're going to Sierra Uniform Mike full, Uniform. Make sure you close it as a courtesy to other passengers. Flight number. Please double check that all your items are clear. Seven six three zero. That the aisle is clear and other passengers can make their way to their seats. That's right. If you're in an emergency exit row, please read the exit seating responsibilities in the card in the seat back in front of you. And next page. If you're all not right. Able to back up top. Actions, please let a flight attendant send it to nav for the IRS. Now's the time to get out any last. Uh, do they do they do the same thing like you, you can track yourself on taxiway if must? Yeah, you tablet. should be able to. You, you just need to have the the. What's it called? The the Nava link, um, link to it. Uh, you can use it on the fly pad, like in the A three two X on the fly pad. You can sign into your account, and it should link and everything, and have that little arrow to track you as you're taxiing and as you're flying and stuff. Yep, yeah, that should work on monthly. I I don't know. I don't think there would be a difference at all. All right, they are done out here, so I'm gonna call for. Can I call for the fuel truck? Because it will use fueling system of this. Boarding completed. Request fueling. Let's do it this way. Yeah, let's put that no smoking light on. Uh, seatbelts, we need, where is the, where is it? Someone wants a new seat, give us a couple minutes. Did the, I just heard the, one of the crew member, the, they just said something, I missed what it was, but, I think the, I think the seatbelts are automatic on this plane. Be honest, I don't recall ever putting seatbelt signs or the no smoking sign on me. Yeah, I'll 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 take a look once we get uh once we get in there. Okay, there's the fuel truck. He's setting up. So we'll go into the FMC. And go right here. Ground services. Oh, I think I have to do it right in here. If I just push me. We are ready to go when you are. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm slow, okay. And we're gonna do ninety three hundred kilos. Okay. Okay, it's saying the plane system is loading fuel. Okay. So maybe I'll... <laughs> maybe if it works that way, we'll just use the fuel truck from here because I, I'm a little confused how this works. It's not even connected or anything. So, a little strange how that works together. It is loading, though. The airplane system is loading fuel. Okay, but why didn't it connect? Kind of the point. Oh, back, 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 back. Where? What did I want to do? Oh, I wanted doors because those cargo doors are still open. Close those. 
uh, we will close the entry door and we will out services I think the jetway will pull back when we're ready to push back all right this should be coming up pretty soon the nav we're gonna get in this and get the FFC set up we're taking a little bit longer than I would like but it seems to always be the case with the 737s lately all right so flight plan where are you there it is flight plan today here going to upsod I have to get a request from uh, ATC clearance first. Ground rule off clearance, Gulf Trot 47630, gate 405. Request clearance to Carrasco, JMC, El Barisso, with information, Mike. Gold Trot 47630, cleared to Carrasco, JMC, El Barisso, 5 north, 2 Bravo, upside, departure, runway 27 right, initial climb 6000, then is filed, squawk 6551. Cleared to Carrasco, Gen C, El Barisso, via Source 2 Bravo, upside departure, runway 27 right, initial climb 6000, then as filed, squawk 6551, Gold Trot 47630. Gold Trot 47630, Redback correct, when ready, contact Port Ulios Ground, 121.7. When ready, contact Wild Rule Off Ground, 121.7, Gold Trot 47630. All right, so we got clearance. Gonna jump up right here. Initial clearance is 6,000 feet. Put in our initial speed, which is gonna be 250, the initial speed limit. All right, and I'm gonna turn on flight directors. Right, otherwise I'll forget. This is annoying. We'll arm the uh, auto throttle. All right, looks like we got the uh, IRS. Take a good uh, SID right there. Standard instrument departure. Close up the flight plan for now. Continue on through the menu. Here, our initial reference. We do have all the passengers on. I actually need to set, I forgot to set the, the cargo. So today the cargo is, just because they loaded the cargo, but see, we don't have any of it on there. Uh, pretty, not that full for passengers. Cargo is 3.5, so I'm gonna do the 18, do 1800 in the front. 700 in the rear. Okay, now we're ready for our FMS. Zero fuel weight, there it is. Uh, reserves for fuel. Looks like uh, no extras actually. Wait, I'm looking at the wrong part on my chart. Uh, 2,400, 2.4 for reserves. Cost index is 34. And cruise today is flight level 360, 36,000 feet. Uh, transition altitude is 3,000 feet. That actually might be the arrival. Let me, I, I think Sao Paulo is higher. 8,000 feet, yep. Execute. And one limit, I usually just put in about 58 for our uh, temperature takeoff. Uh, flaps of five, center of gravity is true, 4.89. 
is our trim. Go. Yeah, let's get the the V1 142, V uh, rotate 143, and V2 145. Takeoff weight is 65.9 tons, and I think, yeah, we got a dry, dry runway. We don't really need to put that in. We can if we wanted to, um, but yeah, I think we are basically ready to go. Uh, we have to remember to do that approach later, but we're ready for pushback. <coughs> So APU, got our uh, fuel pump F1 on and APU start. I'll put our uh, takeoff altitude, uh, our land here. I want to set this to cruise 36,000 so we get the right pressure. All right, APU gen, oop, wrong one. APU gen on, APU bleed, and we'll set this to APU right here. Back on down, disconnect the ground. Ground services, release the ground power car. Back at the top here, turn off the ground power. And we should have, make sure our altimeter is set. That to uh, Hector Pascal's 1021. Check the squat code 6551. Test this. The TCAS test. TCAS test pass. All right, we're just about ready. Get the fuel pumps on. Hydraulics all on. Anti-collision lights on. Pack uh, left and right off, and we are ready for our pushback. Get that clearance. So here comes our, uh, I don't Good know morning, what ladies and technically gentlemen, called, and gate worker, but um, she's going to come over and insert the pin. Yeah, Sasha, I'll check that as soon as we get in the air. I mean, we got a you know, decent length flight here. So I'll have time, but right now I, want, I just want to play in the air, otherwise we're going to be sitting on the ground forever. We don't want to do that, do we? I think the Boeing is lower to the ground because when we did this with, the, I think, the Airbus, we had a few issues, but the person putting the pin in didn't have to, you know, didn't have to duck down. It didn't also warp through uh, the 
warp through the bottom of the plane there. I wish I could. I wish we would get a different tug. I don't know if it, we always get this tug. I've never seen a different one so far. Fortunately. Tail to the uh, right. Peter, they... What is he saying? Push back. We go over here. Ignition. We're gonna use the right ignition today and start engine. Or the right side engine. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the front of the aircraft for a safety demonstration. When the seatbelt light is on, please make sure that your seatbelt is fastened low and tight across your legs. Okay. Request push back and start up. Uh, I do have FS2 crew. Um, I just never. It, 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 I, I just never got into it. <laughs> it seemed like I was having more work trying to figure out the flow. Uh, with that than just doing everything myself but maybe I'll have to try it I, what I need to do is I need to fly and um, hopefully at some point I'll be able to after the stream just do some flights where I can experiment with that kind of stuff because it's a, it's very difficult to do it on stream all this stuff the bag does not uh, and that's what a lot of other people do is that they'll they'll do off stream child, flights where they can figure assistance. this stuff out this start up Starting up engine, a uh, left engine. A Sergio, hello from Valencia. Here we finish the pushback, so we're going to set our parking brakes. Please make sure to exit the aircraft as soon as possible. One three two zero contact. Please securely stow all personal one, items. Four, make sure your seatbelts are fastened and seat fast and safe levels are all in their four, full upright position. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight, and that includes vaping. Right. GSX up. I wish. I kind of wish GSX. You know, sometimes I wish these were outside because I, I feel like the programs inside are a little funky. Okay, confirm good engine start. Thank you for flying with us again, and we hope you enjoy your flight. Gens. Uh, for the engine. Switch right here to uh, Gen 1. Turn off the APU. And the APU bleed packs left and right on. You go outside, I just kind of have to unlock the gear here. Whoa. I didn't see if she had put that wheel back down. Alright, uh, put on heat switches on. Over here where I can see them a little better. Window heat as required. We'll turn those on. 
Shouldn't need anti-ice today. Yaw damper on. Flaps. Set to five. Go right here. I'll just click that. She waved the pin already, so she's going to uh, eventually get out of the way. So the taxi. And we want to. We got the flaps. Auto brake set to RTO for takeoff. Uh, pushback is at an end. Taxi lights on. And runway turnoff lights on. We did the TCAS test already. Well, let's get our clearance. The taxi and get over to the runway. Put those seatbelt signs on as well. Alright, so we're going Yankee. Uh, Yankee 4 Whiskey, which is. I think it might be this dashed line, and then this is gonna be Yankee right here, or Yankee 4. We're on Yankee 4 now. Uh, Yankee 4 to Yankee. And we're gonna be taking a left on the Yankee. Whoa! And disappear. I, I like the FS HUD. I like FS HUD for the the ATC, but I don't know the 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 animations for the for the the other planes are a little finicky. Uh, I feel like they're much better just the Alpha Indy Group traffic traffic injection or something like simple traffic. Both of those uh, the planes seem to move around better. Gonna turn here at Juliet. Hello from Tirana, Albania. Yeah, that was a fun flight. I flew in there. Oh, I don't know how many flights ago now, but yeah, we've flown there. Well, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. Juliet, on to, uh, on to Alpha right away. Go down a little bit further, and then we'll get on to Lima, and then on to Bravo. Oh, we could have done the follow car for this one to take us out to the runway. Yeah, it looks like this is, I think this is the International Paramount. It looks like we got that uh, Star Wars, that Latham Star Wars livery it looks like over there. Right there, I think that's Latham. Yep. They are really moving. Alright, here's Lima. Spoiler. I'm well, glad to have you in here, L in L Infinite. Uh, hey, Icebird. I didn't say uh, I didn't shout out your name, but <laughs> yeah, uh, FS FS2 crew. I'll, I'll have to give it another try. I think I have. I only have it for the A320 though. So. And I don't know. Well, I'll have to just give it some more work with the A320 if I really like it and get into it. Maybe I'll I'll purchase for the Boeings. Well, okay. Bravo, and we're gonna take this all the way to the end of the runway. It should be telling us to go to Quebec or Papa. Okay, now every time I do a takeoff, I get the warning that I am not, uh, I don't have the, 
my takeoff config correct and I don't know what it is because I have my flaps set to what I have it set. I have the trim. Um, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong on that. So we'll see if it does it in this plane. Every time I do it in the takeoff in the Boeing, I always get that the warning just goes off about the takeoff config. Hello, Music World. Welcome in. Thanks everyone for uh, coming on in. Um, if you haven't already, very much appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I mean, you'll be able to get the notifications when I'm going live. Uh, it's not always the same time every week. Uh, today we went live, I think 6.15, so a little bit earlier, but it's going to be between 6 and 6.30 on the days when I do stream in the morning. Tomorrow we'll probably get a stream in more in the afternoon for my time, because I'll be busy in the morning. And then, uh, But Monday morning, Labor Day, here in the U.S., uh, we'll be streaming six, between 6 and 6.30 start. Contact departure. Alright, say it. What is the IVAP transponder? Am I, am I missing something? Do I need to turn that on? I don't know. I think I have everything on that I need for the radio and stuff. Alright, looks good. We got the decals going. I think that's what I need. And position and hold. Let's go. Yep, Sasha, I will check that once we're in the air, I said. Let's see what our look at Navigraph is. Give them a shout out. The B nav and L nav activated. Texture here. We're cleared for takeoff. We have a plane though crossing the runway, so we're gonna just wait on that. And he disappeared. Hola, salve. Uh, Yon? Yon? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna start going back to yeah, at least maybe mixing in the Alpha Indy. Yeah. The Alpha Indy group traffic works better as far as not disappearing all the time, but unfortunately it uh, doesn't follow the ATC perfectly so I don't know there's got to be a good solution somewhere besides that some I mean obviously uh, all right Joan is from uh, Brazil awesome well we're flying out of Brazil here out of uh, Sao Paulo Let's see, give, me my, give me that takeoff from the big problem I don't know why I haven't figured it out yet <laughs> Problem I can fig, I have. I, I don't know. Nope, I'm not Brazilian. Ooh. I always have my takeoffs here in place in there. I always end up fading to the left. Landing gear up. Flaps up. Pilot engaged. Can 
we actually do have a speed limit of 230. Coming into Isnap, and then uh, we got to stable, get above 7,000 feet for the next uh, waypoint. So they're gonna be clearing us that. Runway turn off lights. Off. Gold brand is your favorite. Awesome. Yeah, sorry I don't speak. Yeah, I'm not. I don't speak Portuguese. I, I guess I'll need to work on that. All right. Track that. Track our flaps. Off. Spoiler disarmed. Landing lights off. Over 10,000. We're at 10,000. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like everywhere where I get to fly in the sim. Um, I'd like to fly more in Brazil. I mean, Brazil, I mean, Brazil is very similar in a sense. I mean, just like the size wise, like the United States, it's, it's there's so much to, so much to see. Um, I'd love to go there and travel. I've, you know, I've only been to China and a little bit to Thailand, I mean, for a vacation from China, but uh, that's my extent of like world travel is China and living there for eight years. Notice a little scuff on the window. A little scuff on this window. I don't remember seeing that on the 700. Alright, so we got a good good departure. Go to standard uh, pressure. Back to the beat now. It went to speed quickly there. And, uh, actually, we can get up to 250 knots now. Just about to cross 10,000 feet. At the VOR. Congo. Congo. Congo has. Congo has. Yep, Brazil is the largest country in uh, South America.
loving the clouds on the on our way out of here. I like when they're broken like this, so you can see the ground, but you're also uh, getting some clouds. It gives that real 3D element to the whole thing. Atlantic Ocean. Uh, <laughs> Atlantic Ocean off on our left. American appeared on top of my house once here in Sao Paulo. You mean American Airlines, like an American Airlines flight? Flew over? Cool. Yeah, it's always, I always, it's always strange to me. And it shouldn't be, but I always get a little, I, get, I always get a little surprised when I'm, you know, here in Sim, but even just looking in pictures of airports and stuff, when I see like American Airlines and Delta and United sitting at these airports, in South America and Central America and I'm always like well, that's so weird because I don't think of those airlines as going anywhere outside the United States for some reason and of course they would of course they're gonna be I mean they fly America and United and Delta they fly international routes across the Atlantic and Pacific even but whenever I see them outside of America it's always a little weird not weird to see all the other airlines you know same in Europe and you know or to see like British Airways in America or but giant, you know, Chinese Eastern or whatever here in America. But it's always strange when I see like American Airlines in Brazil or Mexico City, which it shouldn't be at all, but for some reason it is. <laughs> out of fuel in the center tank so we're gonna turn off the fuel pumps for that we're coming up on 25,000 feet and actually we did get a call to continue to 34 so we'll keep going up Thirty-four thousand feet
Alright, let's take a look. So let's take a look. Um, Sasha was asking about the pricing for Navgraphs. I have not been on the Navgraph page for so long. Uh, looks like we're getting a Navgraph Charts 8. I don't know what that means, but... Alright, well, let's see. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not going to put that in. Uh, let's see, we have, so you want to know the pricing. Okay, so you have nav data. This is going to give you your latest sim brief nav data, FMS data manager, and the Navigraph nav data. So this is going to give you just to put into the plane and into sim brief and stuff. It's not going to give you any of the charts or any of that. Um, so this will keep you up to date. You'll always be up to date on your uh, FMS and everything. So like right here, go in your FMS, uh, menu, FMC, I don't want it. I do know in the, maybe, maybe I can't find it on here, but I do know on the, simulation? I know on the the eight, uh, the FF uh, fly by wire A three to an X, there is if you go to that first menu and look at the engines and it'll show you your nav uh, data cycle or whatever. And to keep that up to date, uh, you would get if you would just get this first option, this nav data, it would give you that stuff. You'd always be able to keep it up to date. Sim brief, you'd be able to keep up to date as well. Like right here, uh, sim brief. Uh, if I were to do a new flight, so like here's my air rack cycle, 2208. That's August. Uh, we'll be getting a new one pretty soon. And I can always go back to older ones, uh, but I have this because I'm linked in with nav data and have all that. So that way everything works really nice. Um, but what you should probably want more than just your nav data being up to date is your charts to go along with that nav data. And so this is going to have your nav data. You see that. But it also allow, it gives you your nav char Navgraph charts apps, your Navgraph charts in add-ons. So this so this is, uh, you have, there's actually an app. Uh, that's what I use. But you can also use it right in the sim right here in uh, I think I have it there it is, Navgraph Charts you can use it right here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and you can use it like the A32NX has it built into the fly pad um, you just have to scan in and get into your account so now Sasha was asking uh, how much is it do you get everything if you pay monthly or yearly? Yes, if you're getting the ultimate version, it doesn't matter if you're paying monthly or yearly. Uh, monthly, it's gonna be eight dollars and thirty, uh, eight thirty euro. I don't know how you say that. Eight euro and thirty whatever. Uh, I don't know why it's showing me in euro because I'd like to see it in dollars, but I guess it's a European 
thing, so. Uh, and then yearly, it's uh, 79, uh, 74 90 I thought it was more than that. Well, that's actually not too bad. Um, you're, you're definitely getting a deal if you, I mean, if you pay by the month. As with most subscription services, uh, you pay it by the month, you're paying 99.6, you pay yearly, 74.90, saving 24.7 right there. All right, Jakey has a dare for me. Uh, okay, we'll see. <laughs> While I was talking about that, they gave us the clearance up to 36,000. And also reminds me, we should turn the seatbelt sign off and let the passengers start roaming about. Well, I'm not going to do that because uh, my baby and my wife are sleeping right now, so I don't want to wake them up. I don't know what that would do with my microphone either. Pretty sensitive microphone. Wow, we are maxed out on the engine. Never seen, very rarely see that. I think I only slept four hours last night. We went out to eat, uh, met up with a friend, and then we every time we get together, we just we talk way too long. It's like, okay, we gotta go. And then three hours later, it's almost midnight, and we're still just chatting about everything and anything. We're almost at cruise. Gonna bring up. I really need to organize my stuff on here a little bit better. Bring over Pack X. So this is uh, what's going on on the bottom there. Just above the chat. Uh, Pack X is a good path. Interesting passenger simulation thing. As you see all our passengers seated on the plane, we actually have someone in the in the bathroom. Uh, Eldena Pimentel, it's kind of weird that we're uh, spying on her a little bit there, but... I mean, kind of look at people, uh, they got various shades of satisfaction. And we can see a lot of people are kind of at the hungry point, so there will be a breakfast service pretty soon. Uh, hopefully a drink service. But it gives a little information. Uh, I like the names, localized names here. We got uh, Ambrosio uh, Messiel. Uh, male on a business trip, 47 years old. He's content, but he's very thirsty and hungry. Not tired. He's got a seatbelt off. Uh, seatbelt on. You know, different people. I believe this is first class up here. We have about 16. No, let me do the math. 24 first class seats. And this in Pack X just works. Uh, there is a self-loading cargo. Hey, you've got the. Let's see, what is that? That's we said. I. I can't read the. I'm not. I, I don't know my Cyrillic. But thanks for the subscription. Thanks all the same. Yeah, sore throat.
My plan today is to do two world tour flights, but I'm a little, I'm a little uh, worried that I might run out of time on that. Let's see, we've done this flight. Let's look at my flight schedule here. Oh yeah, okay, we can do that next flight because it's shorter. It's only an hour and a half. That's right. So this one's about this one's about two hours, two hours twenty minutes, and the next one we're gonna be flying over to Chile, and it's uh, just but just over an hour and a half. So I think we'll be able to fit that in. Otherwise, I would do a flight from uh, uh, Miami to Tampa in the U.S. But I think I, I kind of want to get another world tour flight in if I can. Um, and if I can't do a world tour flight, I'll do a U.S. flight because I got a bunch of those set up. All of them about an hour or less. So, but I think today we'll be able to do a two world tour flights, get over to Chile, uh, knock out a few countries today, Uruguay and uh, Chile. And then on Monday or Sunday, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on Sunday yet tomorrow because uh, we're going to go to church in the morning, so that's going to switch the schedule around, but maybe I'll be able to stream in the evening or the afternoon. Uh, but the next World Tour flight will then be doing, uh, it'll be a Chile to Chile affair there, down to the southern part of Chile. But first things first, we're flying to uh, Monte de Vido, Monte Video, Uruguay. Uh, Jakey, I don't know how you can get uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator on an iPad. I do not know. I would assume you need Windows, uh, the Windows operating system to to do that. But I could look. Let me see if there's any options for that. I do not think there is. I, I think you can only get it in this this on a, um, on the. on the uh, Xbox or for a uh, Windows PC. Let's see, I'm just searching here. This is a locked topic from March 2021. I'll throw that up here. You guys can take a look as well. Here on the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums. I've got Mac2244, same question. Uh, I want to use my iPad with Misfits. Oh, okay, he just wants to use it with Misfits kind of use like Navigraph or like different things like that. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, you need Xbox or a Windows PC. Um, for doing something on an iPad, let's see, there's a, what's the one, there's, because I have a, a, a number of people who, who will watch, who follow the stream, and they're always talking about doing flights, I ask them what they're on, and they are on, uh, it's called Infinite Flight. Where's Infinite Flight? It actually looks pretty good. Um, your graphic quality is not going to be the same. You, know, you can see it's not the same as Microsoft Flight Simulator. But looking at the planes, um, they look pretty good. The cockpits look really good. Um, I've never used it. I'm gonna. I, I want to try it out just to see. And maybe I'll do a stream of that. A stream from my phone. Uh, but. Yeah, you, know, you can use it on the Apple or you can use the Google uh, Android. So uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, I obviously you can't get the yoke and you know flight stick and all the you know stuff you get with a PC or even an Xbox. But if you have an itch to fly, I don't know the I don't know the the pricing. I think I think it might be free. Or there's like a subscription or something, I'm not sure, but yeah, there's that. I forget what the other one is. Um, there's another one. I think that one's more open source. But yeah, to be honest, this looks pretty cool. And they have a, looks like they have a decent selection of planes that you can get. 
And we got the 220 right there. That looks like the Airbus. Here we've got a uh, 7. Oh no, that's the A380. I mean, they got the A380. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check. I'm just gonna have to check it out myself. I think because um, it looks like yeah they put four flight. Oh, okay, you can link stuff together. So that that's an option if you do not have a PC. What do you mean X-Plane has a fully functional cockpit? I mean, Microsoft Flight Simulator does, um, and I don't know if you can do X-Plane. I would be very surprised if you could do X-Plane on an iPad. Actually, oh wow, yeah, yeah, free to play. Oh, okay, so let's pop that up. There is X Plane for the iPad. I did not know that. So X Plane for iPad. Uh, it's free to play. Um, download X Plane Mobile for free. You get five scenery regions, so you don't get the whole world. You get a new combat system, which I didn't even realize they had. I get the Cessna 172 and the Sirius Jet SF-50. So, I'm not sure if this is actually, like, X-Plane. Looks like it's for X-Plane 10. So, I know, I have, I've, I've, I flew X-Plane for a number of years before uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, the big thing with X-Plane is the you know, is the, the flight model is more realistic. Um, and they do do a different way, they do have a different way of uh, doing the flight model, which is a little bit, which is, which, which does allow for a more realistic uh, flight model than in Microsoft Flight Simulator, where it's, uh, I couldn't get into the technical aspects of it. But I think I was watching uh, Captain Canada the other day. You know, I, had ju I just hopped, hopped in and he was talking about that thing. He streams both X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator, as a lot of people who have been uh, simming and streaming for a while do. Um, I don't stream X-Plane because I came over to Microsoft Flight Simulator. X-Plane kind of went in the bin. Um, at this point, to go back to X-Plane would be just a big, giant hassle. And Microsoft Flight Simulator is the future right now. Um, X-Plane 11 is coming down the pipeline, or X-Plane 12 is coming down the pipeline. Um, but I think it's going to be... A pretty stiff competition and the big thing that X-Plane has going for it I mean there's some good stuff that X-Plane does that Flight Simulator Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't um, but it's, it's that flight model thing that's what everyone points to and and that's why I got X-Plane originally I was like oh okay this is really cool you're gonna get the best flight model but how many people most of the people that are flying in a flight sim are not gonna know the difference between the X-Plane flight model and the Microsoft Flight Simulator flight model, which is the same, you know, which is similar to what Prepare 3D has, the same kind of concept. You're not really going to be able to tell. Um, out of the box, when when Microsoft Flight Simulator first launched, there were lots of issues with the flight model. I think there still are. And again, you're always going to have that comparison between the two. And if you really know what you're looking for, you'll know. I don't how I can't claim any expertise on that. Um, if you're a real life pilot, you'll be able to tell. The different flight models which one's closer to real life but yep that's the problem with that one uh all of them you're gonna have to, i mean all of them you're gonna have to spend money probably to get uh a decent selection you know certain planes um i mean you have to think to get x plane on pc i think i paid i got it on sale i think i paid 30 bucks and 
that was that's a really good that's a real good purchase you know the amount of time uh, you can get out of it uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator I spent more like a hundred bucks and I probably put another 200 in with uh, mods and uh, planes uh, there are other people most <laughs> most other people you see streaming out here they probably put a couple thousand into Microsoft Flight Simulator at this point with, between all the airports and planes that you can buy great thing with X-Plane on the PC and with Microsoft Flight Simulator is that you get the whole world I remember when I remember when Flight Simulator came out. I was like, "Oh, the whole world is modeled." You know, you get to fly anywhere in the world. I'm like, "Yeah, you were able to do that in Next Plane, and you were able to do that in previous versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator." Again, the thing that the thing that blows away the competition right now with Microsoft Flight Simulator is just the graphics. Uh, you know, and the the way they pull the, the imagery from the internet and all that stuff. That's where the difference lies right now. Um, so. If you're looking for incredible, and most of the people that I watch streaming, if they do, a lot of them are starting to come more over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, especially with the release the release of more planes like the PMBGs and uh, more Aerosoft planes, all that stuff coming out. But early on, they were flying a lot of their airliners in X Plane because the X Plane was much better for airliners than Microsoft Flight Simulator was right out right out the gate. Um, and then doing their VFR low level, which is where Microsoft Flight Simulator really shines, is when you're down low and you can see the trees and uh, the photogrammetry buildings and all that cool stuff. So, um, But I think there's still going to be a place. There's still, you're still going to see people streaming both X-Plane and Miss This, um, depending on which plane they want to fly and you know, so many people have thousands of dollars now probably invested in both sims and I'm trying to not get to a thousand dollars but I figure since I'm this is almost exclusively the only game I'm playing now it's like well you know if I drop thirty dollars here and I you know drop a few you know five six seven dollars on a nice airport you know when it's on sale which I'm thinking I might do. I might get into the airport game uh, with a few of these airports coming up here in Central America. There's some good ones. And I think uh, there's some sales going on. I need to watch for the sales because that's that's when it's a good time to buy things. And you can get 70% off or whatever. Always good. All right, well, unfortunately, we don't get to see a lot of the scenery below us because we have the, the cloud cover. Mumbai to Male. Let me see. Uh, that might be. I can't promise it very soon, but it might be something. It might even be a world tour flight uh, once we get over there. We're not over there yet. It could be a while before we get over there. But that might be an actual world tour flight. Because. That might be a world tour flight, um, but that could also be a. Uh, oh, which airport do you want? Mali or do you want or Balana? <laughs> Two very different places. Though. Yeah. Um, I'll put that in. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I when I will get to that one, but that could be a just a good change of pace. On the flight. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up being a flight on the world tour, but. It's gonna be a while before we get over there, so I'll put that in. I'll make I'll make a I'll set one of those up and maybe it'll it'll pop up on one of these streams. And, and if it doesn't, uh, 
we will be flying out. I know we'll for sure we'll probably be coming out of Mali uh, International because uh, I think that's basically the one airport for the Maldives that we'd fly into. I don't know if we'll fly into Bombay, uh, Mumbai there on the world tour. Typically, last time I flew into New Delhi, so we could. I mean, I also have, a, I already have a request for a Kolkata, you know, Shillong into Kolkata. So we got a couple Indian, Indian uh, ocean kind of flights, Indian, that area world flight. So I will set those up and keep an eye out for that. Still trying to figure out the schedule and set up uh, you know, when I want to do requested flights or if I'll have like a day where it's like, okay, this is just a requested flight stream or um, my, my real goal, as I said, I think earlier is I want to try to do a world tour flight every stream. Every time I'm able to stream, we're going to do world tour flight. And then depending on the length of that world tour flight, if it's a very short, there's going to be some very short world tour flights. Maybe I say, you know what, we're gonna do a requested one. This is a three-hour request or whatever it is. Or I have the I have my short flights for a US tour. So I got a number of different flights we can do, but I wanna do world tour flights primarily first. Uh, that's my first goal every stream is to get a world tour flight in because I wanna get around the world here. I wanna get to every country and uh, we're making pretty decent progress. Uh, this is what, flight 171. I'm planned so far right now through flight 260 or 236 so i'm planned out the next 50 or so flights right and that's all the way to get us to new zealand so so i'd say we'll be hitting the maldives and india probably flight two you know maybe 250 260 270 so probably 100 flights from now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we got the. We haven't gotten. I don't think we've gotten any bubble wrap in any other. So we get those. I haven't I haven't seen too much bubble wrap lately. Usually we just get those uh, air bags when we order stuff now. My wife wasn't happy when I was popping those though. I like to pop those, but she's like, oh, you're, you're, those so loud. It hurts my ears and it hurts the baby's ears. I don't know if it hurts his ears. Well, it probably does, but he didn't seem to mind. See what all the different cameras are in the cockpit. I'm looking at the looking at the map right now. We are flying I think down there. I see a city. That might be blooming now. Yeah, we're just kind of flying down the coast. The Brazilian coast and then Uruguayan coast. The Atlantic's off to our left. But as I'm looking, I'm looking that uh, you got Monte, de Monte Video, and then just down that bay, you have uh, 
Bueno Eras. Now, we're not going to Bueno Eras on this world tour, actually. I, I don't have a flight going in there. We're going to fly to Cordoba. I'm not exactly sure why I'm not flying to Buenos Aires. I think that flight to Cordoba is not even a real life flight. So, I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Like, why am I not doing a flight to Buenos Aires? But, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a key one that hopefully someone makes a request or I'm gonna, you know, set up a flight where I do something, you know, somewhere to somewhere to get the, Bu the Buenos Aires on my stream. Nice thing. I don't know. I can't think of anything good and funny. <laughs> I can't think of anything good and funny that's happening. I mean, funniest thing? I don't know if it's the funniest thing, but I do know... I mean, maybe it's funny. Maybe you guys will think it's funny, but... Uh, when I played baseball in high school... I think in the course of one year... I had... I, I think I broke my nose three times in the course of one year. I don't know if I, I don't know if it was broken each time, but I think the first time or it was dislocated or a little bit, you know, had to be reset, whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, the first time, and it was always my, and it was always my, uh, one of my best friends from high school that did it <laughs> during high school. And it was freshman year, um, so basketball it was during one of our basketball practices I drove down the lane and I'm going for a layup and he came down with his arm across my you know basically the bridge of my nose and I think it dis kind of, kind of dislocated off and he, my nose is still crooked and I, I think they fixed it went in and that was that was the funniest thing I think for my mom was when she was there during the surgery because you know you have all the stuff sticking out of your nose you can't feel anything really. I mean, you can. It's so numb, but you, you can still tell you, there's pressure because you, there's something going on, and you know stuff's going on there. She was just laughing the whole time at that. Uh, that was the first one. They fixed it and went on, played the rest of the basketball season, no problem. Then baseball season comes, and so now, same, you know, still freshman year, baseball season, and. Warming up before. Now there are two different incidents. I can't. Remember. One of these, and it was the same concept, same thing both times. Uh, doing warm up, you know, playing catch, warming up uh, with my best bud, and you know he throws, kind of does a sidearm throw, you know. And when we do warm ups, we like to kind of throw curveballs or you know try to do different, see what kind of movement we can get on the ball. And I feel like the ball moved, had some movement on it. And I also just got my, my glove, didn't get my glove in the best spot to catch it. And it hit the top of my glove, or it might be my left hand, hit the top of my glove and snapped off and then went right into my nose. <laughs> and that gave me a nice bloody nose and probably, I think that was when we were playing at home. So we were at our, you know, playing at our, in our, in our town, playing at other school. And so now I have a bloody nose, and I think that I think that brought it back to the crook, and I we I never got it then fixed because I was like I don't want to do that all over again. And then few I want to say it was still freshman year, but it might have been the next year. But I think it was freshman year. Uh, warming up again, but this time we were. Uh, we were now at an away game. We were at a different town playing. Same thing happened, you know. He throws throws the ball to me, and it skips off the top of my glove because I suck, and and smacks me in the nose, gives me a nice bloody nose, and so twice, twice in the same baseball season, I think. And then obviously the first time was basketball. Uh, the the second two I felt really stupid. First one it was like, yeah, that that happens in basketball all the time. You see NBA players wearing. You know, having broken noses from that all the time. Uh, Jakey, his is he touched a chicken poop. Oh, that's, yeah. 
I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I've ever touched, well, I probably have, I mean, there's sometimes chicken poop or whatever on. You get farm fresh eggs. So yeah, that's, I guess that's my funniest thing that I can think of right now. I'm sure there's something, I'm trying to think there's something in, something in China probably when I was living there was probably funny. I don't know, I can't think of anything where it's like just laugh out loud funny. I can think of just awkward, strange, what the heck's going on situation, but I don't know if there was, I mean, definitely the one that I'm thinking of was not a funny situation, but. Got stories. <laughs> no, you're not disturbing. I just wish, I wish other people would uh, chime in too. I bet. I kind of, I kind of get a little, I have no problem with chatting. That's awesome. I mean, just keeping it fun. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. We're at cruise. We got nothing else to do right now. I'll probably step, I'll probably step away and grab some breakfast or something. Passengers are gonna get breakfast. I think the pilot should be able to get some too, right? Uh, no, you're no problem. Thanks for chatting. No, my, I, I'm, I'm just a little. I always get when, when there's just one person chatting, and that's, that's the life of you know only having a few people watching at a time right now is that you might only get one person who's uh jumping in the chat for a while. <laughs> so hopefully some more people come in and uh, chat and. Get going. Yesterday we did pretty good on I think the second stream or late in the first stream and the and then the second stream because what I do on these streams is I break them up into a couple I break the streams up between flights. So when you're watching, <laughs> jump in, jump out. Life is fast. Yeah. Well, I totally understand that. I am like I sit here when you're streaming. You're like, why won't these people? Why aren't these people more engaged and talking and just chatting with a storm? here um and like i said like when there's only eight you know, right now i think there's eight people watching oh well you know that's you know it's better than some days and you know yesterday like yesterday i think we had like 25 at one point so that was nice uh <laughs> yes life was much slower yep when i noticed that all the time and then Yeah, the life, you never thought it would get faster. Yeah, it just, well, it's crazy when you're younger, you know, like the, I think, I think life can slow down if you're anticipate, if you're, if you are looking forward to something, if you have like, you know, I remember it seeming like forever when Microsoft Flight Simulator was coming down the pipeline and it, was, it had been announced it was going to be coming out and what august 2019 i think or 2020 whatever whatever it was and it was just like oh when's it gonna come when's it gonna come and and then that day you're sitting there like okay when can i download it right and then but when you don't have something to look forward to like a vacation you know but it's still even even then as an adult it does go faster when i'm what you're you, but you remember when you're a kid like just waiting for your birthday or for christmas just for Christmas, you know, Christmas Eve, like we open our presents on Christmas Eve, you know, but, you know, obviously a lot of people uh, get their presents on Christmas morning, but just waiting for Christmas morning or Christmas Eve, whenever you can open your presents and just, to, you know, that anticipation and just seemed to drag forever. And I don't know, now I feel like it's amazing. Like, I can't believe it's already September. <laughs> like, I just... I can't believe my baby's already eight months old. Like how fast things have gone. We've already been in this house now. We've already owned this house now for a month. Um, there was a little bit, there was a little bit of a drag there at the beginning of the month when we bought the house. And then I was w waiting for the, when I had the day off so we could start moving stuff in and get in the house. Um, so, uh, yeah. I just hope more people can chat, but it's like obviously when you only have, you know, few people watching and and i'm notorious i'm i'm terrible at it it's like 
I have so little time outside of time I stream to actually watch other people stream. I wish I could. Um, and I'm always, like, the few moments I do step in a stream, I'm like, oh, man, they're so much better than me, and I wish I could stream like them. And, and sometimes you have to be careful comparing because, well, okay, they got 90 people in there watching or 200 people in there watching. It's like, of course, the chat's going to be moving because there's lots of people. Let's see. Let's read some more. Grew up on a little farm at the end of a road near the wood where fox and rabbits say good night. I feel like you're reading a poem almost the way you wrote it. It was such a nice place to live, a little life of a little boy. We had all the space. We'd go for play into the wood. We'd go to swim to a near river. Got some fish and had a nice meal. Those were the days, my friend. They seemed to never end. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I didn't get to grow up on a little farm near the woods. That sounds pretty awesome. I got to grow up. I, I think I was pretty... I, I had a pretty good... Uh, Oh, childhood, I think. Uh, it was a little... wasn't perfect, but whose is, right? Um, but, I mean, I think it... I think it was... I remember when I first... You know, so I grew up... You know, until I... Until... Until after second grade. Uh, so I'm probably, what, seven, eight years old? Yes. Probably eight years old. Uh, we, my parents then finally, we, we grew up here in Milwaukee. I lived in Milwaukee. We lived in duplex, so we were always renting. Then my parents bought a house, and I was so excited about this house. It was so cool. It was like, wow, this is so different. And and then a month, you know, right when my parents closed on the house, my dad got a job offer, and he's a pastor, and so he, he kind of had to take the job offer. Otherwise, he'd be kind of black marked. and be like, okay, you can't keep rejecting job offers. Um, and... It was five hours away. It was up in the... So, we're, you know, Milwaukee's a big city. And then we moved up north to this small, tiny city of 1,500 people. Lots of lakes, woods. Um, and it turned out to be a really awesome place to grow up. But when I first moved there, third grade, suddenly I all my friends are, you know, five hours away. I'm in this, and now I'm going to public school. I don't know anyone, so that was just crazy. And but I think it it, it turned out for the best. I was able to. I don't know if I have, if I had stayed in Milwaukee, if I would have been able to play sports in school as much as I did. I mean, I played baseball, football, and basketball all through you know middle school and high school. Um, you know, made some good friends. You know. You know, got to go fishing. Uh, the lake was just down the street. I mean, basically we walked to school every day because you know everything was so close. Got to go to the movies all the time. You know, at the, just the local one-screen movie theater. That was really nice, actually. But yeah. It's Hey, Daily Mail. Good evening. Oh, yeah, it's evening in Australia, isn't it? I'm looking forward to getting back over there on the world tour. I've done a flight. I did a flight in Australia, and I have a requested flight, I think. Cairns to Brisbane. So I'm going to have to do that eventually. Oh, I have to do this flight. <laughs> it's just trying to work those in. Uh, I, I'd like to be able to do the requested flights because I want you guys to enjoy flights on there. But wow, it's 10:54. Yeah, what's the best time? Okay, so 10:54. So it'd be yeah. So the best time for you guys probably would you know evening flights or if I if I would fly in my evening it'd be more your morning. Well, I don't know if they'd be the best time though. That still wouldn't really be the best time. Because you'd be off to work. Unless it's the weekend. Yeah, I suppose a six, six o'clock stream is okay because, you know, at nine. <laughs> I, okay, a 30 minute time zone. That probably. I always wonder why we don't do. I guess it gets complicated if you have too many time zones in a country. 
But by having 30 minute time zones, you don't have as much of a contrast between one end of the time zone and the other. I know like if you're on the eastern part of the central time zone, well, you, you're, the sun is going down an hour earlier or whatever. It always gets confusing. It gets really confusing now. I was confused a couple streams ago because the time zones do line up between North and South America. And we tend to forget, I always tend to forget, and I think most people do, is that South America is way further east than North America. So your most, your, most of your Western stuff in South America is the east coast of the United States. You know, New York is basically the same as, you know, Colombia and Chile and all that. And so I'm flying down there, and I flew out of the central time zone, out of Mexico City, out of, you know, Chicago. And I'm flying further and further east, but the time is still the same. And I'm like, what's going on here? And then I remembered, oh, we're on daylight savings time. And in the south, they're not because it's winter down there. And then it's going to flip. But the thing is now, it's not going to flip anymore because, at least in the United States, we passed. We're going to just stay with summertime all year, which I think is a little silly because summertime is the the not normal time. We, we move the clocks, uh, what, ahead, behind, back or ahead, something I forget. That's the strange time is the summer. Your normal time is your what we usually do during the winter. And now we're gonna take the summertime and put it into the winter. And so now this, we're, no, we're never gonna see the sun if we go to work in an office or something. Now I don't work in an office so I get to see the sun, but yeah, I don't know. Like, in China, when I lived in China, never had to think about it because they don't have daylight savings time or anything like that. One time zone, which is crazy because if you go to Western China, you know, evening, it, the sun is, you know, with six o'clock in the evening, well, the sun is where we would think, what, two o'clock in the afternoon, one o'clock in the afternoon. I can't, it's so hard to think about. And I think, well, okay, so your clocks aren't adjusted. But you can't you just adjust when you do everything. The problem with it is, it's still, well, if in Eastern China, they're working a nine to five schedule, and then you're, but in the West, well, nine o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be dark and you're still sleeping. Well, now you're missing, and that's why we have time zones, right? Well, we, that's why we have Zulu time. We have Zulu time because that's how we can make sure it's like, okay, everyone's on the same page for time. We don't have to think about the time zone. But you have the time zones that way people can live there. You know, it matches your life in a way, I guess. But like I said, yeah, it's like, I was saying, it's like, well, if you're in a country that only has one time zone, just figure out, okay, the sun comes up in our time zone at 10 o'clock or whatever or whatever it would be you know whereas in this time zone to come you know, or this part of the country it comes up at six this part of the country comes up at 10 whatever it is and just adjust your days and adjust everything local the problem comes but it shouldn't really be a problem is that you have a you because know, you're all on the same time the, the issue is like okay well they're not gonna they're just gonna act like you guys are all getting up at the same time as them but you're not yeah, I have no idea how they do it. I've never been to Western China, so I don't know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, maybe they do adjust their clocks or they adjust the way their time, their day works. You know, so they go to bed at, you know, maybe they go to bed at two o'clock or the other way around. Yeah, I suppose, like having Christmas in summertime. Well, and the, the funny thing about that is, you know, get all, I mean, we're not gonna, get super religious here I mean you all know, get into theology or anything but it's like what is Christmas Christmas is Christ mass it celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ right and it was you know set up to be on December 25th there's a massive I mean there's people that are die hard that well December 25th is not when he was born which is typically the the historical and most people are like recognize it's like yeah it isn't um, there are some people are like, well, no, it actually is. If you actually look into it, it possibly could have been. I think, I think more research points that it, 
you know, Jesus was probably born if you do the, you figure out the priestly rotation with, you know, John the Baptist's father, that's where we have that. You figure out the priestly rotation, when the, and then you add six months to when John was born. There's all this stuff, it, you know, that Jesus would have been born like in springtime, right? Yeah, well, that's the whole thing, is that in, in the European consciousness, okay, we set December 25th as the birth date when it was probably March 25th, and we think of it as, oh, okay, well, Christmas is winter. It's a, it, it, Jesus was born in the snow. And it's like, well, first of all, he was born in Bethlehem, which, you know, yeah, during the winter months is colder than during the summer months. But it, yeah, and it snows there. But it, you know, was he born that time of year? And it's like a birthday. It's like, okay, well, this birthday, it's a, you know, this holiday is a winter holiday. It's like, well, it's a winter holiday in the north. It's a summer holiday in the south. Um, the fact that the fact that we've tied so much to it being a winter holiday, and I think it's picked that up because um, because you, you you fold in the pre-Christian practices of a lot of these cultures in Europe. You know, like the concept of a Christmas tree comes from that a little bit. Um, you know, your winter solstice celebrations. Christmas in October. <laughs> well, it's sort of the same thing with Halloween, right? Halloween kind of... It's almost... It's its almost an autumn fest... It, you know, it doubles as an autumn festival in a lot of ways, right? You have your pumpkins and, you know, all that stuff. And... But in the South, again, if they're following Halloween, going with October 31st, well, it's a, it's more of a spring thing, you know. But again, what's the what's the basis of Halloween, right? Why do we, you know, how did how did Halloween get all this stuff with ghosts and mummies and you know, you know, death kind of things related to it? It's like, well, because Halloween is All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day Eve, because November first is All Saints Day. Well, saints die, right? You know, usually. You know, in the Catholic Church, you don't become a saint until after you're dead, and then you become sainted. Well, there's that. Uh, saint Nick? I believe Saint Nick is... Well, the real... Now, Saint Nick, there's a lot of different origins for Saint Nick. Uh, like, because I think the original... The, the furthest back, oldest Saint Nicholas is, uh... He's out of Turkey. He was a... He was a Greek, you know, a Turkish Greek. Um, I believe Bishop. He was around at the same time as uh, Athanasius and um, Arius, like during the whole Arian controversy. So back about the time of Const Emperor Constantine, and he actually there. I think I think I heard a legend that um, Saint Nick actually uh, punched, just socked uh, Arius in the face, you know, over their disagreement of uh, Christian uh, doctrine. And obviously, Arius, Arius lost because uh, the Trinitarian version of Christianity is what survives to this day. Um, there are some Arians still running about, but anyway, that was there was a real Saint Nick, and and I think I, I do think he gave a lot of alms to the poor and gifts to poor children, and so that's where you get that kind of gift giving thing that then gets transported over to Santa Claus, which is just Nic you know Saint Nicholas, Saint Claus, Santa Claus. Um, I think the Netherlands, it'd be more like Sinterklaas. Uh, it's just, it's the same person. And for some reason, that it, it got moved. Uh, that character became this Joe, you know, got Coca-Cola turned, made, really made Santa Claus into what he is today. Um, but it, he got moved into Christmas versus earlier December 6th, which is uh, St. Nicholas's uh, uh holiday his his day his saint day so it's always very interesting looking into that that history but there you know he was originally you know uh an olive skinned greek you know from uh asia minor which is now turkey oh iceberg is also a nick uh but a september 25th one well birthday's coming up pretty soon my birthday's coming up october 16th so see if i 
anything special stream wise or if I'm working or who knows. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, we're right. Uh, thanks for the subscription, Canal Pista 11. Cool name, Canal Pista 11. I, I always find names on YouTube interesting. Of course, some names are simple. I'm mean, like the Daily Mail. I always wonder. I was like, are you the Daily Mail? Like the official the Daily Mail? <laughs> the newspaper or the little the website or whatever? Uh, it's funny how different countries are like plant life, beliefs, holidays, all sorts. The first time I saw it, and I pressed enter too, so I meant to say the first time I saw an acorn when I went to Canberra, I was eight years old. Eight years without acorn. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Azel makes liveries. He's asking if you guys have any other liveries. I, I'm not sure what uh, plane you're doing that for. What? And I, I think I asked this and you didn't get I didn't get an answer, I don't think. Uh, what sim are you doing that for? Are you doing are these Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, liveries and for I think you were saying you're doing for the Captain Sim triple seven? Is that what you're doing? As I said, Agel, you should uh, go over to flightsim.to and there's a whole section on there. I th I don't know if you were you might have been gone by the time I mentioned it. But there's a section in flightsim.to. Great, this is a great website for getting liveries and other mods. Um, so I don't know if you know about it, but there is a whole section on here, right here, livery requests. And this would be a great place for you if you want to make liveries. People are requesting liveries now. Again, you can pick your plane. Uh, so I don't know if you have a certain plane you like to do. I think you're. I feel like you're doing the. Oh, you're doing. That's right. You're doing it for flight here. That was the other one. Someone, yeah, okay. So someone was asking if they could get um, flight sim on, uh, on the um, on the iPad. You cannot. Well, I think. <laughs> but there it is. Like your. And we looked at Infinite Flight. Here's another one, Flight Gear Flight Simulator. I believe you can get both of these on. Oh, well, I don't know. This one might be for PC. This might be like an open source kind of version for PC, so. Ooh, that's kind of cool that they have fires. I don't think that's in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, sorry. I always forget that I need to pop that up on the screen. So this is Flight Gear. I think this is this is open source. I'm guessing this is for PC though. I don't think this is. Doesn't look like there's a, an iPad. So this is this is if you want an alternative to you know Misfits, Prepared 3D, X Plane, the ones they have to pay for. This looks like it's free. It's open source. So pretty cool. I mean, this this picture is pretty cool. If they you can do fight forest fires in it. I mean, I don't know how that works. I'll have to check it out. I say that, I don't know if I'll ever get around to it, but it'd be pretty cool. This is scoreless. Okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, you can play Misfits 2020 in the Xbox Cloud, and that, so can you, if you're playing on the Xbox Cloud, can you get that onto like your iPad? See, I'm assuming you're probably gonna still need an Xbox. Yeah, for sure, Agel. Yeah, it's it's free. I mean, it's open source. I mean, it's amazing the stuff that is out there. That if you you there are lots of free versions of really cool games. Um, free first. I mean, so many cool free games out there actually. That sometimes it's like, hey, take a look at these and give them support because you know it's the same with the same with the airplanes and the modding and the airports and stuff in you know anything like X Plane or Misfits or any any game. Where people put in all this effort and give it away for free, and it's such it's so appreciated. But yeah, that Blake Gears, Blake Gears, that open source one, and then of course if you guys are looking for something where you can fly on uh, on your phone or on your iPad or whatever, you're gonna be looking at uh, Infinite Flight. It looks like the one that a lot of people that come into the come into the chat talk about, and I've never checked it out. I'm gonna have to check it out just to see. Um, it looks like there's you know, there's an Infinite Flight Pro, which gives you like multiplayer and some more stuff probably. Not sure how much purchasing you need to do, but when you think about it, 
if you're doing X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're spending money just for the base game and then extras along the way as well. So the fact that you could possibly do the same thing on mobile. All right, let's see, where are we? I think we're about halfway. We're near uh, Porto Alegre. Alegre, I don't know if I'm saying that right. We off to our left. See the Atlantic over there. There it is, Porto. Porto Alegre. Aleg Allegra. Port, um, Port Allegra, maybe, I guess. Uh, Agel, next flight, Larnaca, Larnaca to uh, Keflavik. That's a long flight, yeah. Uh, did you, you flew into Larnaca yesterday, yeah? Daily Mail, Lion Air. Oh, okay, you're uh, saying a different, another livery. RFS is, what is RFS? RFS is a good flight sim for mobile if you can't afford a massive PC to run. Misfits 20, 20, not that good, actually. I think if I've heard good things about Infinite Flight, but it seems like that's the one that people are always mentioning. Uh, what is this RFS? RFS. Uh, let's see what let's see what pops up. Real flight simulator. There it is. A website. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I've heard of this one. It's only a dollar to buy it. Screenshots look decent. I mean, even the even the scenery looks a little bit better. Eh, it's a little. But what do you? I mean, it's mobile. Hmm, that doesn't look too bad for scenery, to be honest. Oh, the view out the window here, out of the out of the cockpit window. Yeah, I love, I love these different. Just seeing things out the. I mean, I love going outside the plane. I wonder. See, I always get this tilt on the camera when I'm out flying. I wonder if I turn the rotation down to nothing before I go away from the camera. You can see my rotation down to nothing. I wonder now if I go inside the cockpit for a while if that tilt will still happen always looking for a solution to that because it's really annoying you know coming back an hour later and go out to external view uh, in the drone camera external view and your plane's upside down or the camera's upside down uh morning lavinia brancroft brancroft uh jakey martin turboprop flight simulator is a good one too it gives me an Gives me uh, Miss uh, Emma uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator X5. Oh, the RFS. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. What is it? Turbo prop flight. Let's look that up. Turbo prop. Look at this. Turbo prop flight. The, that, that preview video is on like super speed. Is it all just turbo props in it? I wish they had a website. Let me watch that guy. <clears throat> Maybe the trailer just always looks like well, That's pretty cool. Different. You can actually walk in. Oh wow. You can like do a whole you walk into the plane and everything. That'd be pretty cool. You know, like Train Sim, uh, Train Sim World. I think Train Sim World Breeze starting is coming out soon, or it is already out. Um, which is funny because I just picked up Train Sim World Two, and have barely touched it. Yeah, I got that for like five bucks or something. Um, 
but in you know, like in the train sim world games you can you know you can actually get out of the plane and walk or out of the train and walk around the train do your inspection you know uh walk on the platforms all that kind of stuff that'd be pretty cool to have that option to do that in microsoft flight Simulator. not to be required like you have to go from go down the jetway to get into the plane all that stuff it'd be pretty cool to have that option so this is made by one guy awesome it's amazing what one person can do it really is All like turbo props. <laughs> I know. I think sometimes we get a little. You look at something like this, and you're like, "Oh man, look at how the graphics." Is like, fifteen years ago, probably, I would say what fifteen years ago. Definitely twenty, but fifteen years ago, if you got a game that looked like this, you'd be like, "Whoa, it's so realistic!" I mean, that's what people were saying about Flight Simulator X, right? I mean, X Plane Eleven. Oh, it's so realistic. Look, I remember when I got X Plane Eleven, I was blown away by what it looked like, and you know, now you look at it and compare it to uh, compare it to uh, Flight Simulator. It's like, yeah, it doesn't look good. Well, since I'm on, since I got it open, here's a uh, here's my little uh, here's my schedule for all of uh, the world tour flights at least until we get to New Zealand. If I hear up here like the time it's gonna take, what time it takes off. So kind of looking ahead, uh, these dates are just kind of rough estimates. Uh, like anyway, we're gonna do this one today, right? Yeah. So we'll probably get this one in on this weekend. Uh, so we're coming up, we're going to be flying, uh, today we're flying to Uruguay and we're going to do, uh, Chile also, and then we're going to do another flight to Chile to the southern end, we're going to get out to the Falkland Islands coming up, back into Argentina, over to Paraguay, back up to Lima, Peru, up into Ecuador, then we'll be into Panama and into the, uh, knockout Central America, and there's a bunch of airports right in here that I might start pick. I might actually buy a few airports here. Uh, San Jose has a really good um, freeware, but then I have to look at I. Yeah, so the ones that are colored, I've I've already gotten everything set up for them, thumbnails and all that. So I'm gonna have to see what these airports look like, the base ones. If they're okay, then we'll go with that. But I think like uh, Guatemala, um, San Pedro, San Salvador, these all have some pay nice freeware looking airports. I think uh, Managua also has one. I know J Owen Roberts, there's one out there for that. A lot of airports out there. And I'm afraid that if I get one, I'm afraid that if I buy one, I'm going to end up buying all airports. And, uh, the reason I've kind of shied away from buying airports is because how many times am I going to fly into the airport? That's what makes it of value to me. It's like, of course, I'm going to fly the Boeing. I'm going to fly these, the 737. Like the 737, that's why I'm picking myself a little bit with the 700. Because how many times am I going to fly that now? But I'm going to fly this 800 like crazy. It's going to come up all the time. Um, obviously, I'm going to continue flying the A320, the fly by wire, and that's the best value because it's completely free. Um, but this, the same thing with CRJs. I try to get, fly those as much as I can too because I spent money on them. Um, same with when I buy. Uh, like a scenery, like I have the four season pack. Well, I use that every flight. So. I had an Xbox and I was so disappointed when Microsoft Flight Simulator X didn't release on consoles. When did Microsoft Flight Simulator X come out? 2004 or something, right? So that Xbox were around at that point, right? Did uh, Flight Simulator X? I remember, yeah, I remember when I was younger back then, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think my uncle, he had Flight Simulator and, you know, had the, the box and everything, and I was just like, oh, wow. And I think I flew in it, and it was just, it was amazing. The I'm like, wow, look at these, it's so real. And then again, uh, let's see, right here. My Flight Simulator X, it released uh, 2006. Okay, I thought it was... Oh, it's a sequel to Flight Simulator 2004. That's crazy how 
came out only a couple years after. And then there's just this long period where it didn't come out. Well, I'm 35, gonna be 35 this year, right? What year is it? No, 30. Yeah, 35 this year, so in October. I'll be 35. So I was playing, you know, back in the days. Let me see if there's. This is nothing. All right, let me, let me step away for a second. I need to use the lavatory. I'm back. Australia is getting the B2 bombers. Those are one I would like to learn. Okay. The Daily Mail. Well, I am me now. <laughs> is that is that your age? Me? I still have my dream of going beyond the Sims and going to Air Force Academy. Uh, I turned off the webcam because I was I just stepped away to go to the bathroom. Go to the lavatory. That's all that was. Australia's getting the B2 bombers. Cool. Wow, we're already half over halfway. It goes quick when the flights kind of go quick when there's some chatting going on. So I'm, I'm yeah. Next flight, next flight. What? An hour, hour and a half. I said. The next flight's an hour and a half, I believe. So we'll get that one in. I think it's fogging up a little bit. Got a little bit more haze. Okay, so we got a little close to the Atlantic before. Kind of made a little course adjustment. Uh, headed back inland a little bit. See, I'm so used to the the Airbus that I I always want to go down here and get my meta data and all that stuff, but I don't think there's a way to do that. the message system.
I have to go back. What I need to do is I need to look back at some screenshots of what I can find. I'm gonna, let me pull that up. Let me go look at what I can find. I have all my... I think I have them in here. There it is. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to do this. So we're just gonna have to kind of do a little... I, I almost want to want to do is make some videos taking all the pictures from X-Plane. I don't think I have the originals though, so I have like the overlays on them too, but I almost want to make some videos like it's like, okay, let's look at some X-Plane or and the same with this one, almost do like some just pictures of the flights. You know, like ten flights at a time or whatever it is. And I get So yeah, this is this is the first flight I ever did with the World Tour concept. This was back in X-Plane, and I would draw the maps even. I think I even, like, just traced... I don't think that's... Yeah, I think I traced that. You know, but I had all the information, like how much cargo, total payload, how many passengers, the real-life flight, uh, what I used in X-Plane. Like, here I made it, like, Olympic Airways. I don't know why I used Olympic Airways. I just thought it looked cool, and I didn't have an Air New Zealand livery. Yeah, but I always flew the Boeing 737-800. Let's see if we can find... And I think I started in New Zealand because I downloaded a New Zealand photogrammetry pack or had all the satellite imagery uh, because uh, X-Plane does not come with all that. You need to add that in if you want it. That's why it looks so good. I didn't get them. Uh, yeah, about the same. I feel like the lighting's a lot brighter in the Zebo one over there next plane. Switch is a little bit more squish. I kept it. And see, it's this is I like this. Um, I don't know which uh, which uh, dash this is, but I like this one more. This is the one I always flew with. Whenever the plane livery has the other one, and I know I can change it in the settings. Uh, you can change where things are. I don't like the other one as much because I'm used to this one because that's the one I flew all the time. But yeah, same thing. Okay. I just couldn't remember. Uh, maybe. <laughs> And so it's going to be interesting doing these flights again, getting back over in this part of the world because I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to be doing the same flights or if I'm going to be going backwards almost, doing different ones. So this one's to New Caledonia, again on the A320, but I was flying it with the 737-800 and used uh, Fiji Airlines, I think. Yeah, Fiji Airways. I'm looking forward to getting Fiji Airways on the 738 again. That's all I have to page off from that one. I think I have like, I think I have like 80 flights. Uh, trying to find some. Alright, so this is the fifth flight. This was uh, Wallace and Futuna to Fiji. Um, real life, it's Air Caledonia, but. It, here I did PG Airways. Every once in a while you get a really good airport design. Yeah, and I remember these were the early days when I was learning how to fly too, and I'd be like, uh, 
Turn your thrust up to zero for 10 seconds. That's my dare. I don't think I can, it won't do anything. Well, it will. Here, we'll turn off the auto thrust. Three, four, five, 1,000. Seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi. All right, there I did it. Thrust to zero for 10 seconds. Didn't do too much, slowed us down a little bit. We didn't lose too much uh, for altitude though. Might have to add that back in on Twitch. I, I had a few like things you could do on Twitch where I was like, oh, I'll, I'll land with, um, well, I know one of the guys I follow on Twitch, he did, he has one where he can land, he'll take his glasses, or he has to wear his glasses upside down or something. <laughs> um, Creepy Kirk, a uh, buddy of mine over on Twitch, he, uh, I had, one of the things I had was, uh, I'm not sure how it works. I think it was like you could, maybe what I had was you could just, you could make a dare or you could just have a challenge. Or maybe it was something like I had, you know, land without landing. I can't remember what it was. Maybe it must have been slightly because I don't think I would have thought of, could have thought of different things to do like that. But, you know, if you used a certain amount of your points, you could say, you know, hey, land without landing gear. So I had to land one of these flights without a landing gear, which is just ridiculous. I'm not doing that again. What is this one? Tonga, Fiji to Tonga. So these are gonna be some long flights. I mean, this one's not too long, but we're gonna have some long flights in there. This one actually was a real, is a real life flight. So again, I'm kind of comparing. Again, I think the lighting is just a lot brighter in the Zebo one over next plane, but. Yeah, see the that's what it is. The, the, these little landing switches don't look right to me. But I'm so used to this, and I'm also used to having an extend and retractable. Um, maybe, maybe, I, I'm wondering if there's different liveries, they'll have different ones. Because otherwise, I, I maybe have to look in the settings, there might be different things you can do. It's just so weird, because I think it's the, maybe it's the lighting. I'm so used to that orange, and so when I'm Ah, there it is. That's a big... No, no, wait, that's the ground bus one I was looking for. Yeah, now looking, it's like, oh yeah, it is all the same, but it just seems so different. Maybe it's just because I got so used to the Airbus that now I'm not used to what the, uh, the interior looked like. But yeah, I mean, it is the same, which is obvious. It should be. We don't have a tiller, do we? That's kind of, that, actually that area is a little bit different. It's like, where's the, the tiller to be right there? Can I move that? Yeah, where's the tiller? The tiller's missing. We have one over there, not one over there. Uh, what do the fuel pump switches do? They, well, they're the ones that pump the fuel into the engines. So I think if you were to, I'm not going to turn them off because I don't want to have an emergency right here. But I think if you would turn them off, you'd probably lose it. You'd probably lose the engine. And at some point, and maybe I'll do this on the U.S. tour flights or something. I might, I actually might do that on the U.S. tour flights. I think I'll turn on the, like, failures, especially in the if the PMDG failure, see what happens. Because those flights are going to be shorter, so it's like I'm not killing as long of a flight if that happens.
man, I remember this flight like it was yesterday. I remember taking all these screenshots because that area just looks so good. I wonder if I can find the, I think it's this one. So this is the flight. I'm going to make this bigger too. For a second. So this flight is Hong Kong. I did Hong Kong to Seoul. What's crazy about this flight is that the flight path goes right over where I live. So I lived in Hangzhou. It goes over Shanghai too. I lived in Hangzhou. But like right in here is uh, Jenda which is my wife's hometown and we lived there. When I did this flight, that's literally where we're living. And I was flying along and I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> that's our town. So here, let's see. So this is Hong Kong. And I downloaded all these uh, all the photogrammetry for these areas along the path, I think. So it would look really good. Okay, so I think we're getting close. This is... Yep, so this is it. I think this is it. Um, I don't see. Oh no, here it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that that one wasn't it. This was... What is this flight? Yeah. I don't know what this is, what this area is. But right there, there's Jenda. There's the city right there. Our school was... The school, the little school room we were renting was like in this building, right in this area. There's a nice little, little hill. There's like tunnel, a couple of tunnels that go through this connect one part of the city to the other. Big roundabout right here. And we lived, I think the next picture. And we live right, I think, I wanna say right there. And it's just an open field on this Google image at this point because uh, it hadn't been built when they took this picture, but that was so crazy, we flew right over it. And What's kind of funny is that when we when we flew to Thailand, and I think when we were flying back from Thailand on a trip, we were flying from uh, Bangkok to Hangzhou. Well, we flew the path of that flight flew right over, and I was I'm looking out the window. I'm like, oh look, there's Jinda. And my wife's like, no, you can't see it. And her mom was like, no, that's what, you know, he doesn't know. And I'm like, yeah, that was Jinda. I know what it looks like from above. You yeah, know, that's what it looks like. We flew right over it. Uh, we were going the other direction. No, we were going this direction too because we're going north right now. Hangzhou is right up there. So that was just wild when I did this flight. I was like, oh, it's so cool. I'm flying right over where I live. A little bit out of date. There's a lot more build up right there. Same over here. All this is apartment buildings now. But that was just so, it was so crazy. I rode my bike. I used to do a lot of bike rides in China. I rode my bike all the way up here somewhere. That was really fun. I'd ride around this river. Pretty decent hills. Hey Lavinia, doing well, doing well. Just looking back, back, back at some old x plane fights, flights, and actually looking at right where I used to live in China. Like right there where that grass field is right there. Our apartment is in there. It's not showing up because uh, this Google image or Bing, whatever I pulled it from, didn't have it. But yeah, I'd ride my bike through a lot of this area. That's like the highway, it goes through the tunnel, one of the highways. This one goes all the way to Hangzhou and Shanghai. Uh, this is the, there's a dam right here which created this uh, lake called Thousand Island Lake or whatever. Oh. This is Hangzhou where I also lived and see all the apartment buildings. I rode my bike past these, I think, I think this is where I did ride past, yeah, not that one, I don't think, but past some nuclear power plants like that. Yeah, so here's Ben John. This is where I first worked. 
I basically got an apartment building right over there in my school's like over here in this area. And my wife, she lives over here somewhere and we work at the same school right in there. And then later we lived right up here along the canal. And this canal goes all the way up to Beijing. So it's a pretty famous canal. We lived in, lived in this area, I think. pretty cool just looking back at it and um unfortunately uh this looks so much better than what we have in next plane i'm riding my bike yeah i'd ride my bike right past these ones i think or no that's i think I before like this photogram actually looks better than what uh microsoft flight simulator pulls from bing for bing the bing photogram actually for china sucks i think this is google and it looks really good. Now, if you go down to the ground level, it's all just flat. But it looks pretty good from, you know, 30,000 feet up, right? Can't tell. Shanghai. Now, Shanghai does look a lot better in X-Plane, or in a flight simulator than this, so... Now we're into Korea. For all those Korean Air Koreas. That uh, world traffic, world traffic three did a really good job with world traffic. Uh, I mean, that was a that was a value purchase right there. For explain, I think Alpha India Group traffic does pretty well. I wish. I think FS, FS HUD ATC is trying to do sort of what, I think World Traffic did a really good job of doing. Um, it was all in one thing, whereas FS HUD ATC is trying to pull stuff from AIG, which does, and then have the ATC work with it. I think World Traffic did it, right? Yep, there are cameras everywhere in China. That's why we, we I mean, we, we moved summer of 2019 because uh, things were starting to change it was probably not going to be good and luckily we got out when we did because I wouldn't have wanted to be there during this whole past two, three years alright we're coming up on our top of descent We've made contact with Monte, Monte Video Center, maintaining our cruise. Expected arrival 50 minutes. Should be good on that. Take a look at some of the passengers. I've never been in Taiwan. Uh, my wife wants to go to Taiwan, but again, I have to see how all this uh, COVID stuff shakes out everywhere because... Okay, am I... Now, I think I spelled... How is Uruguay actually spelled? I think it's spelled with an A. Oh, it is you. It is to you. Okay, so I spelled it right in some places and wrong in other places. I don't know why I thought it was an A. It actually is. Okay, so you spelled it correctly. I think I have it correct on the overlay. Yep. I think on the yeah on my on my on my thumbnail, it's wrong. That's okay. I just never went back and changed it. I was like, eh. Yep, Uruguay used to be a province of Brazil. 
Let me see. I, yeah, I don't know. I, did, I didn't know that. Looks, yeah, I, that makes sense. I mean, it kind of just is this little, little end of Brazil. Uruguay is officially the Republica Oriental del Uruguay, the Oriental Republic of Uruguay, which is confusing to a lot of people because we think Oriental, we think uh, East or East Asian, um, but Oriental uh, literally just means I think, believe the East, so the Eastern Republic of Uruguay. Um, I mean, I guess it's sort of the east side of South America. I, yeah, I don't know why they call it that, where that comes from. I think there's a Oriental Republic. Yeah, this is interesting. I'm looking at uh, Punta del Este dot com. Okay, I'll pull it up. Okay. Here it is. So here it's saying the Oriental Republic of Uruguay receives its name from its location to the east of the Uruguay River. Okay, so it's uh, what is it called? Well, it is Republica Oriental del Uruguay. So it's a uh, del means in relation. Uh, next to the Uruguay, so it's you know, east of the Uruguay River. That's interesting. Um, this geographic factor and many historic reasons determine that the people who are from Uruguay are called Orientals. I did not know people from Uruguay are called Orientals. I did not know that. Oh, I didn't pop open the... I'm sorry. I didn't move it over so you guys could see what I was looking at. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, so they speak Spanish because we always talk about Brazil speaking Portuguese, and the Portuguese did found uh, Colonia do Sacramento, but then uh, the Spanish founded Montevideo. I'm not seeing anything about. Uh, Uruguay won its independence between 1811 and 1828 following a four way struggle between Portugal, Spain, and later Argentina and Brazil. Okay. So I don't think it was ever. It, I have to look. I don't know the history of it. Okay, Jose Gervaso, Gervaso, All right, we gotta start doing our approach here. We'll get back into that as we're descending. I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna bring it up on the screen so you guys can see it. I'll be up there in just a second. Um, or I wanna figure out where to park first. We'll park at gate. We'll, we'll park at eight. Parking spot eight.
do that. North parking, 10. Uh, just making sure we have everything in that we want on, uh, so that the ATC will give us what we, what we actually want. Um, I typically don't change things on here, but I like to get the right parking spot, otherwise uh, you, you, you can't find the right spot. Uh, we are doing ILS, transition combi, okay, yeah, that all matches. So apply this, it's going to do a little work, figure it out. Alright, so that's what we're expecting. Already missed our top of descent, like always. For some reason they're a little late now on getting us down. We're going to have to do the intervention button. on the seatbelt signs for descent. Ladies and gentlemen, the flight crew has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. Please return to your seats and fasten your seatbelt. Just the customs at our destination, flight attendants will begin handing out forms momentarily. Please review and complete these forms and keep them with you for presentation upon arrival. I'm not sure why we're descending so slowly. The plane is like, you can go fast, and for some reason we're not taking advantage of that. Jumping over to the, I'm going to get on my, oh, I don't have really a start start, is there? Just kind of straight got in. Really weird, there is no chart for the, for the arrival, for the, the, the terminal arrival, the TLAC of one gulf. But, once we get to Conby, we're going to transition into the approach. Uh, at Conby, we need to be. Yeah, it looks like 3,000 feet. Well, there we go. Now it's descending like insane levels. The VNAV. It works, but at the same time, it's a little questionable. <laughs> I'm almost getting to the point where I'm going to start doing vertical speed down because it gets a little wild on the descent. Oh, speed tipped over. Oh yeah, so you have Jose Gervasio Artigas uh, launched a successful revolt against the Spanish in uh, 1811. Uh, the new government in Buenos Aires convened a constituent assembly where Artigas emerged as a champion of federalism. Um, so it sounds like basically they became... Oh, okay, he wanted to do uh, federalism. Uh, bueno, but Buenos Aires really wanted a system based on unitary centralism. So he broke with them and then he besieged Montevideo. Monte so it was all, they were, they when they got the independence kind of, it was like, uh, yeah, that Rio de la Plata, Argentina kind of thing. And then he, uh, it's kind of confusing. I'm reading this, it doesn't make sense, I'm confused, I'm gonna have to... <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like, yeah, the Portuguese came in, it ended up under the, yeah, under, up under Brazil for a while. Yeah, so there's different ideas of government and everything. 
War of the Triple Alliance. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into this one. Holy cow, I need to look into this war, the, the, the Paraguayan War. I mean, I... You have this war going on down in South America, starts in 1864, so this is toward the tail end of the American Civil War. And then you have this uh, Paraguayan War, and then, you know, they're basically fighting with, you know, the same, I mean, heck, I mean, some of these pictures almost look like American Civil War pictures. I don't really have to look into this. That'd be really cool to, to do some coloring, some pictures. I wonder how much of a how many photos they have from that war. Like the American Civil War is so many, and then you know these, you know this war probably not as much. But that'd be pretty cool to do some coloring of black and white photos of you know these guys. Or some pictures from from South America. I think I know the. I think I know a book I'm going to be looking into next is. And right now I'm reading about the history of like the Golden Age of Spain. I think I'm going to look at a. Look into that uh, war. All right, we're at twenty six thousand feet. 27,000 feet. We need to get down 20 here. I should pay attention to, like, our approach here. So we, I should be. That's what I should do. Alright, uh. Da, 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 da. Oh, we, we should put in our approach. What did we get? We got runway two four. Runway two four uh key lag one goal. Gonna set the auto brakes to be enough. Let's check the picture of that what we got for a runway. We're coming in on runway 24, 10,499 feet, 3,200 meters. That'll be plenty. Uh, two should get us slowed down. Uh, uh, let me see. What, what do we got for exits? And uh, we'll do three so we can get uh, last flight. I had a hard time getting a slow down. I, I kind of want to not go all the way down the runway. Hey, Leonardo, welcome in on our approach into uh, Monte Monte. Montevideo, uh, Uruguay.
How are you doing today, Leonardo? Do uh, full flaps. Our pro speed is going to be 135 knots. Is that the land? I forget if this is the landing speed or the pro speed. I think that's the landing speed actually, so we're going to want to be approaching at 140. And that's basically what that's saying right there wind correction plus 5 knots. Uh, coming in, we're on descent. All right, the transition is 3,000 feet here. Uh, let's see if I can get the ATIS for... No ATIS, okay. So, I don't think there's any way We got the Medar, we got a 200 degrees, three knot wind, uh, VFR conditions, 11 degrees Celsius, uh, 1028 for the pressure. Fifth great grandfather uh, fought in the American Revolution. All right, minimums for our landing today: 400 or no, 305 feet, which is gonna be 200 above the. Radio that's gonna be 200 feet. If we do barrel, it would be 400 and or 305. I wonder if there's like a way to do this faster. Yeah, so we're gonna be parked away from a gate. Uh, so we'll get to see how, I don't think this is gonna work very well, but we'll see how passengers will uh, navigate that with GSX Pro. All right, we're cleared for the uh, TLAC One Golf arrival. Coming up on 10,000 feet, we'll flip on the landing lights and all that. Our ILS is 109.9. We have begun our final descent into your destination. Flight attendants will be passing your destination. The collect any traffic. They don't know Monte the Vito or Monte Video. Uh, I need to put in uh, the navigation. Our course. 242. All Wi-Fi related tasks and so any larger electronics. All right, Leonardo. Hate to see you leave, uh, but hopefully you can catch the landing in the replay.
weird way to say that. You just say, why not to say 3,000 feet? But we're going down 3,000 feet. Landing lights on. We've got our course. We'll throw this in the heading one as well. Pancoff's list of names. The Vinia. Cool. I'm going to give you guys a link for the uh, next stream, our next flight here. Uh, for you guys on YouTube. Put that in there. Always gets me a little bit when the sim catches. Okay. Lights are on. There's the airport. Uh, free freeware update for the airport. So uh, I think it adds in a, term a couple of terminal buildings. Looks really good. Uh, we're not going to be parking at that terminal building, but it's a pretty cool. We're we'll parking right over there. Look pretty cool. Alright, we're cleared ILS approach. Report established on the localizer.
we're really too high. I don't know why we're not descending. Okay, I think we're getting better. It's on the it's on the arrow, but it just seems like we're a little high. Approach. Once we make this turn, we're going to be catching the glide slope, hopefully, at Alaru. Again, it's on that line. It's following the diamond, so it should. Not trusting it, though. Didn't capture the glide slope. Oh, that's what it is. Landing gear. Right. Well, for some reason, it didn't capture the glide slope. Diamond really far down. Fly it in manually, I guess. Ooh. Screw the trim up a little bit there. Too low. Right. 
Oh, he took that in manually because... Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. Didn't the it didn't seem like we captured the glide slope. AM, and it's currently about 13 degrees Celsius. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bin as items may have shifted during the flight. We thank you for flying with us and we hope to see you again soon. Alright, TCAS standby. Uh, Alright, we've landed. So transponder standby. Uh, flight director's off. And for some reason, <laughs> ATC is confused now. I don't know what happened. You're finding me. We're vacated from the runway. Uh, taxi lights on, landing lights off. Position lights steady, wheel well lights on. Window heat can come off. And APU start. Okay, here we go. So I think we're looking for parking N. For some reason there's no other planes here. Not sure why. Oh no, there's a plane over there. There's the terminal. We're gonna be parking over here though. See how GSX handles out here. Need a marshal is what I need. Let me know what further I gotta go. Parking brake set. Taxi lights off. A few gen switches on. Bleed on. And selector to APU. And cut off the engine one and engine two. Everything magically pops into existence. All right, so we have ground power available. Oh, there it is, it's coming. That's a patient, Martin. External power is not available. It's right there. What? What is that? You got to plug it in. Right. Typical. All right. So I'm gonna call for it. I guess I'll call for it from inside the plane. We'll just have to do that. 
So wheel chalk set. Maybe it doesn't want to do it because we didn't have the wheel chalk set. No. All right. Well, I always forget that the wheel chalks. Uh, we need to press the ground power. Now there's two power units kind of on top of each other. But that'll work. And I think we want to go right here. And let's see what they do for uh, deboarding. Awesome, they got the stairs coming. Perfect. Alright, back up in here. Let's turn off the seatbelt signs. Go to ground power. Turn off the view. Turn off the... Okay. Uh, we... I didn't change that, uh, our altitude for landing. Forgot to do that. Uh, we need to... What else do we need to do here? Decast standby, y'all damper off. Engine start switches both off. Ground. Uh, hydraulic pumps, fuel pumps, those come off. Uh, what else? All right, that's as far as we'll go there, and we'll go outside and see if we can see the passengers coming off. Hopefully. Once the bus gets here, I guess. There it is. Hey, we got a flight attendant standing here. Got a couple of flight attendants. Where are the passengers? Where are they? There he is. There's our first passenger ready to come off the plane. I wonder if they'll go off the other way a little bit. There they are. Yeah, they're both coming off. Awesome. Look at that. And the doors are even open on the bus. That's cool. And they're all packed in the bus, ready to go over to the terminal. Really cool. Um, I wonder if that's all the passengers, because it keeps getting a message up there on the top saying 89 of 152 have been let off. Um, I think there's a sim brief integration. Okay, another bus is going to be coming, it looks like. Sounded like. So this guy's going to leave. Maybe another one's going to come and get the rest of the passengers. On the other side, we have the baggage being taken off.
But while that's happening, let's jump over, bring up Volanta, and uh, review the flight. There comes another bus, a little red one. Almost ran into each other. Alright, so let's review the flight here, right up from Sao Paulo down to uh, Montevideo. Landing rate 192 feet per minute, not too bad if I have to say so myself. Uh, what do we have? About 2 hours 19 minutes for the flight time. And we will stash that away. Got some more passengers coming off. Bring up the world tour map. And today we have landed in... Move this over. Landed in Uruguay. So let's uh, reveal that. There we go. That's not Uruguay. Paraguay. Where is Uruguay? There is Uruguay. Guess I pad the things in the wrong order. There's Uruguay, with the smiling, smiling sun and all. All right, so next flight we're gonna head over to Chile, and uh, Santiago, Chile. Uh, so I'm gonna give you guys a little intermission on YouTube. You guys are gonna go over to another stream, so I can set up the flight and keep the flights all kind of organized. Close up pack X as well before we get before I let you guys out. Passengers are all off in pack X, so we'll just go end flight. Extreme flying conditions, that was probably oh well, we had a passenger receding. I, that's what that was at the beginning of the flight. Extreme flying conditions, that was probably the landing. Um, but still getting a recommendation. Everyone's satisfied. Not a too bad of a landing rate overall. All right, well, thanks for coming along on the flight. Let's see what GSX does here. I think they're nearly done. Argentina, wind, calm, yeah, let's have everyone deboard. All right, Lavinia, see you in half an hour. Here, let me give you the link for the next stream. There it is. There's the next flight. Well, thanks a lot for coming along on this flight. We're going to be uh, going to an intermission on YouTube. It's, the stream will end, and you guys will go over to the other one. Um, we'll be right back here, and we'll be headed over to Chile on... Let's see if I have the flight right here. What are we doing? LATAM Chile, flight 409 in the Airbus. Awesome, we're going to be getting the Airbus again. So I will see you in you know, 15, 20 minutes after I get that all set up and get loaded in. So I will see you then. Until then, take care and click on that link for on YouTube on Twitch. Uh, hang around and we'll be right back.